Welcome to USMLEFastTrack.com. The section we're going to talk about today is from First Aid for the USMLE Step 1, 2013 edition. Page 360. What is disseminated intravascular coagulation? Disseminated intravascular coagulation is a widespread activation of clotting which leads to deficiency in almost all clotting factors and creates a pro-bleeding state. Describe the changes in platelet count, bleeding time, prothrombin time, and partial thromboplastin time. In disseminated intravascular coagulation, there is a serious amount of coagulation that is going on. Therefore, this would lead to a decrease in the platelet count because all the platelet is being used up. It would also lead to increase in bleeding time. Since this is a pro-bleeding state, it would also lead to an increase in prothrombin time as well as an increase in the partial thromboplastin time because in this condition, almost all the clotting factors become deficient. So that includes clotting factors of both intrinsic and extrinsic pathways. What lab values are observed in disseminated intravascular coagulation? In disseminated intravascular coagulation, you see formation of cystocytes which are also known as helmet cells, and this again will happen due to the mechanical destruction that is normally observed in disseminated intravascular coagulation. There would also be an increase in fibrin split products, which are the D-dimers, as well as a decrease in fibrinogen and factors 5 and 8. What are all the causes of disseminated intravascular coagulation? Disseminated intravascular coagulation occurs due to sepsis, which is caused by gram-negative bacteria, trauma, obstetric complications, acute pancreatitis, malignancy, nephrotic syndrome, and transfusion can all lead to DIC. What is the mnemonic to help you remember all the causes of disseminated intravascular coagulation? The mnemonic to help you remember DIC is stop making new thrombi. So that's S for sepsis, T is for trauma, O is for obstetric complication, P is for acute pancreatitis, making is for malignancy, Nu is for nephrotic syndrome, and thrombi is for transfusion. So that stop making new thrombi. For more information on this topic, click on the link in the description section below. For a full USMLE Step 1 review, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com where we help you review the entire first aid for the USMLE Step 1 with high quality videos and hundreds of detailed pictures for a better understanding of the material. So to learn from the best USMLE review book, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com.